I mean, I think that it's been really pretty interesting over the last, you know, the last God, 25 years or so and stuff, how it went from, well, that dinosaurs, non-bird non dinosaurs didn't have any feathers at all, to that, oh, the ones that are most closely related to birds had feathers, to now, to that we have evidence that uh, the ancestor of all dinosaurs was feathered, and that probably that the ancestor of all of the group that contains flying reptiles, pterosaurs and dinosaurs, was feathered as well. We know these animals had feathers from, for a variety of reasons. I mean, the big smoking gun evidence is the animals that have been found in northeastern China that lived uh, about 125 to 150 million years ago where the, there's actual real fossils of the, the feathery covering on the bodies of them. And we think that the feathers originally evolved as thermal blankets on the animals because they had an advanced physiology. So just like, you know, the group of animals we belong to, mammals have hair as a thermal blanket, that uh, birds have, living birds use their feathers as a thermal blanket, and more primitive animals on the bird line, meaning the non-bird dinosaurs, had feathers as well, and that these were originally for uh, keeping warm, and then were later co-opted as display structures, and then later co-opted again for flight. So well, if we look at birds today, all living birds are more closely related to one another than any are to a non-bird dinosaur. But birds are dinosaurs. I mean, just like that we're, us humans, we're primates and we're also mammals. Birds are dinosaurs and they're reptiles. So it's just a subcategory of the group that they belong to. But the dinosaurs which are most closely related to birds are animals like Velociraptor, animals like Troodon, Xanabazar, and some of these small, uh, very agile, large-brained theropod dinosaurs. Some dinosaurs like, you know, the infamous one from Jurassic Park, Velociraptor, are more closely related to living birds than almost any other dinosaur that you've ever heard of. Well, I think that, you know, the, the whole thing of, you know, smart or dumb is really, I mean, that's not an empirical thing that you can say. I mean, you look at living birds and some are seem to us really stupid, whereas others like crows actually have some real empirical cognitive ability. I mean, that they build tools, they can figure stuff out and everything else. So that it's just that the term smart and dumb are kind of like arbitrary. Uh, but we can tell those that uh, many of them had uh, brains which are very similar to living birds, meaning that they have a really expanded forebrain, which is sort of the area which does a lot of, uh, processes a lot of sensory information, a lot of visual information, and it is the major cognitive center. And animals like Velociraptor and Troodon have brains that are pr pretty much identical to what uh, a living bird has. I don't know if they'd be trainable, but at the same time, they would have had a a very acute sensory systems and they probably had advanced behaviors. If you could transport yourself back, you know, 80 million, 90 million years ago, and uh, 100 million years ago, and you went to some of the forests in northeastern China, where we have one of the best glimpses of what uh, an ancient, uh, you know, fauna and ecology would have looked like. Uh, you would have seen a lot of really familiar animals. You would have seen things like lizards. You would have seen mammals. You would have seen uh, true birds. You would have seen all that kind of stuff. You would have seen crocodiles. Uh, but you also would have seen things that I think would appear to you know most people who aren't real trained in the subject as just really weird looking birds and that those were the non-avian dinosaurs because you know animals like Velociraptor would have been completely feathered. They would have had uh, wing-like structures but they didn't use those as aerodynamic structures because they were just weren't big enough but you know we know that they had feathers of what we call modern aspect just like the feathers of a modern bird that covered the arms and they're probably used as display structures. Uh, they would have been you know very active and agile hunters uh, so, I mean, I think that uh, it, through the past was a lot more kind of real semen than we often think of it. So, I mean, it wasn't just this land of giant, you know, stupid lizards running around and stuff like that. It was very bright, very colorful, and uh, that it would have looked very modern.